back to my channel. Alright, so in this video, we're going to be talking about farmers' little children. Okay? So, farmers' little children is used in um, finding the remainders of big numbers. Okay? So, we have something like this. It's been expressed like this A raised to the power P minus 1 is equals to 1 mod P. Okay? So A is an integer, and P is also an integer. P is not a multiple of A. Okay? These are some of the examples that we need to be solving in Fermat's little theorem. Okay, so we are going to solve the first um, question. So as usual, we are going to um, bring the formula A is for p minus 1 is equals to 1 mod p. Okay? So we have 3, um, 7 can be represented as p. So we say 7 minus 1, sorry, 7 minus 1 is equals to 1 mod 7. Okay? So this actually means um, the power of 3 raised to the power 7 minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod 7. Which means when you divide um, the power of 3 raised to the power 7 minus 1 all over this, you get the remainder 1. Okay? So you can, we can express this like this. Um, 3 raised to the power 6, 7 minus 1 is 6, is congruent to 1 mod 7. Okay, but but we are asked to find the remainder three raised to the power thirty one when divided by seven. Okay, so we see but three raised to the power thirty one. We express it to look like something um, like um, three raised to the power six. Okay, so how we are going to do this? We are going to say thirty one divided by six. Thirty one divided by six. Um, we have five. So we are going to say um, 3 raised to the power 6 times 5, then plus 1. The remainder is 1. Okay? So because 3 raised to the power 6 times 5 plus 1 will give us 3 raised to the power 31. Okay? So in indices, we can express it like this 3 raised to the power 6 dot 3 raised to the power 1. Okay? But we say 3 raised to the power 6 is congruent to 1, right? Which means the remainder of 3 raised to the power 6 divided by this is 1. So we put 1 then raised to the power 5 dot 3 raised to the power 1. Okay? Then mod 7. So 1 raised to the power 5 is 1. Then times 3 raised to the power 1 is 3. Then mod 7. Okay? So we say 3 raised to the power mod 7. So 3 raised to the power touch 1 when divided by 7, we have we have remainder remainder 3. Okay, so this is another example. We want to find the remainder when 21 raised to the power 115 is divided by 29. As you can see, this is a very big number. So we are going to still express it like this. A raised to the power P minus 1 is equal to 1 mod P, right? So as usual, we are going to have 21 as our A, then 29 as our P. Okay? Okay, so we can say 21 is power, 29 minus 1 is what? 28. So it's congruent to 1 mod 29. 
So this actually means that when the power 21 raised to the power 28 is divided by 29, we get the remainder 1. Okay? But we are, we are asked to find the, um, the remainder when 21 raised to the power 115 is divided by 29. So we say, but 21 raised to the power 115, we express it into something like this. So we are going to divide this by this and then we add it to the remainder, okay? So when we do that, we have something like this. We have 21, then you say 28 times four plus three as the remainder, okay? So we have 21 is for 28, um, 21 is for 28, it's congruent to one mod P, right? Uh, mod 29, so uh, we have we can express it like this in indices, 21 raised to the power 28 all over 4 dot 21 raised to the power 3, then mod 29. Okay? So we said 21 raised to the power 28 is condensed to 1, right? So I'm going to write our 1, then raised to the power 4 dot 21 raised to the power 3 mod 29. So 1 raised to the power 4 is 1 times 21 raised to the power 3 is 9, 2, 6, 1, right? So mod 29. So we say 1, 9, 2, 6, 1, mod 29. So we want to find the remainder. As you can see, the remainder is still big, right? So we are going to simplify to get it to the, um, to the least. So we are going to say this divided by this, okay? So we say 9, 2, 6, 1 divided by 29. We are going to have 3, 1, 9. And then we say 3, 1, 9 times 29. We have 9, 2, 5, 1. Okay? So, so we say 9, uh, 9, 2, 6, 1 minus 9, 2, 5, 1. We have 10. So we say that the remainder, so the remainder. is 10.